All right, so generate collection report is sort of a way of taking a collection of records and turning it into something that looks good. Uh, and if you're doing this inside a flow and you want to manipulate it, you generally should use a data table. But what if you want to send an email with some information from reports? We've got this send rich email. I've got it right over here. That's an installable action. If you don't have it or know about it, it's, um, it can be found on uh, unofficialsf.com and added to your org. It can send rich email. Uh, so what we need is a way to take a collection of records and turn it into something that looks good in an email body. So let's take a look at this. The action we're going to run is called generate collection report and what I'm doing here is I'm specifying the type of uh, object that I'm passing in I have to do it twice um, and in this case I'm loading in some accounts uh, and then I'm get, specifying the name of the account fields that I want to show up and essentially this is going to be a table uh, and it's going to generate a little table um, there are some style opportunities here and you can see that I'm passing in values for row style string, for table style string, and header style string. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, there's a way to hide the header but we're not going to hide the header for right now. Uh, and we uh, are going to pass in, this is how we're passing in the accounts, we can either pass in an individual account or a collection of accounts, whatever your data happens to be in. So that's what that's what we're going to pass to this action. We're going to take the output, we're going to show it on this screen, and then we're going to send it in a PC email. So let's give that a try. Okay, so here you can see the uh, account data has been rendered into an HTML table and it's being shown on my flow screen here in the normal display text uh, window. Uh, but like I said, that's only so interesting where this really uh, becomes useful is when we send it to someone in an email. So we sent it out to an email and let's go look. Okay, so here's the email and there it is an email. So this is a nice way to email record data. Uh, so let's go back now and um, let me talk a little more about how you get the look and feel you want. Because these are HTML tables, uh, the, you can style them using CSS. Uh, and there's actually a lot you can do. Now it's not like super easy. There's We don't yet have color pickers that you just point and click at. Uh, so the way you gotta do it is you gotta actually provide style strings that will be added uh, to the table as the HTML is assembled. Now how I've, you could type the string directly into here, but what I've done is I've used text templates because they're a little easier to work with. If we go here, and take a look. So here are the text templates. So uh, the header of our table, you can see it's green background, white characters. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm passing this text template string into the action. So I can specify a background color uh, and there's a lot of just free websites that will instantly let you pick a color and tell you what this code is. You can also use a lot of text. You just type green here, that will work. Uh, and this color is being applied uh, in this case to the font. Uh, likewise, if we go and we look at the the rest of the table, this is the row data. So its formatting is established uh, by whatever you pass into the row style string. Uh, so if we look at that, you can see that all I've done here is, is pass in a different background color. There is also a table wide uh, style string that's applied to the full table. And 
Uh, so right here you can see that we're applying child table style string. And if we look at it, you can see that here we're do very useful. We're setting the width, giving it a fixed number of pixels. This prevents the table from sort of spavening across the entire uh, window. Um, and uh, this margin left creates an indent, which you're going to see is useful in a minute. Um, one note about using text templates for stuff like this, always change to view as plain text before you make any edits. Uh, you do not want to try editing when you're in view as rich text because uh, it will insert extra tags that will create problems for your styling efforts. So always shift it to view as plain text before making changes. Okay, so let's take a look at a little at a slightly more advanced uh, example here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to mix accounts and contacts. Uh, we've got it. So we're going to get an account, and then we're going to get its related contacts. We're going to use two instances of this. We're and that's going to allow us to have one look for the account sort of a header and then have an indented set of contacts. So let's run that. Okay, so here you can see that we're getting a nice sort of uh, parent-child effect. We've got the parent information from the account. In this case, we've only used uh, the account name, but we've given it some styling to make it larger and change the font. We've hidden the header in this and in, in, in this example, in, in this uh, in, for the contact information, uh, we're using uh, this formatting right here. And if you want to do this now, as, as I mentioned, you use independent instances of this uh, gen report generator for the account information, for the contact information. Now, what you need to do, well, you don't need to do it, but what what I like to do is take the outputs from these. Now, these outputs are going to be strings. They're going to be HTML strings. Sort of think of it as a stream of HTML. You're going to get one string from here, one string from here. I am actually, in this screen, uh, I actually am simply referencing them separately. But what about the email? How do we want to do this in email? Uh, now the email you can only pass one body string and that's right here HTML body this is that send HTML email that I was talking about so you gotta if you're if you're creating different pieces of output you're gonna have to sort of jam them together so you, and send them as one combined string to the email um, and to make things more interesting we want to actually use a template. What is this template, this email template? Well, if we go over here, this is just another text template, but you can see that what we've got here is we've got some boilerplate text that isn't going to change from email to email. And then we've got a single string uh, variable that we created called body text. And that's right here. We just created that as a manual variable. So we had, we had something to sort of each time we generate a string from one of these we sort of add it on to the end and then we have one big body body text to pass um, and so we can um, and we can basically get all of the combined report generation into our email uh, now you could do it other other ways too you could basically instead of having a single body text here we could use uh, the output from the uh, account information and the output from the contact information um, but I find it scalable to kind of you know assemble a single body string as I go okay so the third sort of variation uh, that I'm going to show you um, basically takes what we've seen so far and builds a report that loops over a bunch of accounts uh, and for each of them generates a mini report like the one you just saw uh, combines them together and puts them in a screen so I have a hundred 
accounts uh, here and only a few of them actually have contacts so we can uh, go run this now it's taking a long time and why is it taking a long time I don't know if you noticed but I have something in here called close transaction this is an action you can install called commit transaction and what it does is uh, the simplest way of putting it is it prevents you from getting the SQL too much SQL error message that you often get when you're looping over flow data and trying to do some sort of query or write inside the loop in this case we really don't have an alternative uh, for every one of these accounts we need to fetch their related contacts um, and if I didn't have this closed transaction it would go quickly but it would give me an error instead each time I go through this loop there's about a hundred accounts in here um, it is closing it and doing it as a separate transaction it's taking more time uh, but it will not give me a limit error and here's what it looks like when it's done running remember that in this particular flow I'm just throwing it into a screen but this could easily be an email and in this particular case most of the reason that you're not seeing any data any child contact data is that these are just uh, test accounts that I created incidentally by um, quickly uploading a CSV file using the brand new CSV import to records flow action uh, that you can find on unofficial SF uh, but here are the tables for the other accounts you can see it's all here so uh, that commit transaction action is available on unofficial SF um, as an action you can add if you have these um, scalability uh, problems that you need to solve uh, and that's uh, what we've got right now for a generate table report uh, output. Um, feel free to provide a comment on things you'd like to see enhanced about this. And if you uh, are a developer, um, feel free to uh, make some improvements and give us a pull request. Always very much appreciated. Uh, thanks a lot.